Hey guys, John here and welcome to NASCAR Thunder 2003. Taking a little bit of a break from Dirt to Daytona for a while due to frustrations and things like that. And we are going to be playing the career mode of NASCAR Thunder 2003. Quick little note I wanted to say I had planned on playing the Xbox version because I had gotten a, uh, an Xbox original to replace the one I had that wasn't working so well. As it turns out, it's not working so well either, but what are you going to get, you know, with, uh, with getting these old consoles, you never know what kind of shape they're going to be in. So, unfortunately, I can't play the Xbox version, which would have a slightly sharper graphics and resolution, but um, it's not that big of a difference, and I think the GameCube version looks pretty good, and you know what, I'm used to it anyway from, from all the years that I've played this game, so... We're going to go ahead and we're going to jump in here, and I've actually already set up uh, our career right here, career one, jump into that, and boom, this is our car. Let's go ahead and look at the car a little bit better. Uh, where can I do that? There we go. Preview car. So yeah, um, starting things off in our career mode. We are the number 64 Pontiac, sponsored by Delphi, Kmart, and Craftsman. And uh, I think the car looks pretty cool. Uh, obviously, what's really fun about this, uh, as it is with a lot of the, the NASCAR games, but not all of them, is that you can uh, change the paint scheme even if you wanted to, like, every single race. So maybe we'll play around with that throughout the season of shaking things up with our paint jobs. But for now, I think this looks pretty cool, and this is the one that we will be going with for now. And yeah, so let's look at our team here real quick. Obviously, you start off with a low-rate team. Uh, you can unlock things through R&D by buying these things. You can spend more money to make the time go by faster as well, um, but you need money to do that. Um, also with career mode, you have to stay on top of your engines, chassis, and everything. And to do that, you have to have your guys building new engines and chassis to replace the ones that you've used a couple of times. Really, you shouldn't use them more than a couple times. Now, you can have them uh, refurbish one, but I would only use that for backup. Honestly, you're going to lose so much over time that you're better off consistently making new ones, especially because your team gets better as you go and as you do more R&D. So you don't want to keep using the same stuff they built when they knew less, basically. Um, and then the sponsorship is nine races to start with. What I typically like to do is after the primary runs out, I don't choose it again right away. Because there's always a chance that you get a primary sponsor that's going to cover the whole car. And when that happens, basically you're getting a better team. Uh, well, better sponsorship package. But sometimes you can get put into one of the top teams. Or at least an established team by doing so. You might replace the driver that was in that car. Now usually that only happens after one year has gone by and somebody's retired or something like that. But it's also possible that it can happen um, mid-season. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's see what we got here. Race weekend is the Daytona 500 to kick things off. Um, the next season that rolls around, if I've won a poll, uh, you can do the shootout before the Daytona 500, which is pretty cool. And also, if I win a race before Charlotte rolls around, we can do the all-star race, which is, the, which is also neat because you can win a lot of money in that. Um, I think that's really all that we need to talk about. You can always see the schedule and who won, the standing. We are chaos racing out of Charlotte, North Carolina. But uh, anyway, that's pretty cool. You can see your driver stats, awards, uh, the rookie of the year battle, which we'll be a part of. And I think we'll be going up against Ryan Newman and Jimmy Johnson. So that's some stiff competition. <laughs> But uh, that's going to be fun. And then as the years go on, they add in new drivers, um, you know, fantasy drivers or whatever that take place, uh, take the place of other people, and they run for Rookie of the Year. But uh, anyway, 
let's go ahead and head to the Daytona 500. Now I have a couple of tricks that I'm going to talk about once we get there for, for setup and stuff. So yeah, oh, and I should go over, the, I guess, the settings really quickly. Uh, we have 10% race length to start. Uh, damage is limited. Yellow flags are on. I do allow assists. And you're going to probably be mad at me for this, but I am starting on rookie. But trust me, this game is difficult. What do I need to say? I didn't change anything. Um, this game is very difficult. And we'll see quickly that it's a good thing I did this. Now, going into the next season, I will likely be upping the difficulty and maybe even the race length. But for now, trust me, I've done this a lot through the years I jump back in this game just for fun and run career mode. This game is tough. Uh, you can ask my buddy Mr. McBlam who does a series on this and he did the highest difficulty to start out with. You can get your butt kicked a lot in this game. So I'm starting at the bottom and we're gonna make some money which is gonna help us get more established and get prepared for higher difficulty in the future. But anyway. Let's go ahead and race at the Daytona 500. <laughs> All right, so here we are, Daytona 500. We can practice, qualify, and after we qualify, we'll get the option to do the Gatorade duels. Oh, <laughs> I like how the player record says in driver for new driver. I forgot that I ran a lap and then I wasn't playing as anybody in particular. I was testing things out to see which, uh, which version I was gonna do. But we'll hopefully beat that and we'll have our name on there from now on. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about a trick that I like to use, especially when you're underfunded. Okay, so obviously a big part of this is making sure that your tires don't wear out too fast. And we've been over this in the other series, but I always like to crank this up a couple notches above what they have. It does affect handling a little bit, but it always makes the tire wear less. And then we're going to go into suspension, and here it's usually a little too tight by default uh, at the plate tracks because you're much more maneuverable than you think you'll be. So I like to take that down a bit. And then we get to the bread and butter. Now the gear ratios. When you first get into career mode, you are so underpowered. I mean, you wouldn't even believe how underpowered you are. But... There is a bit of trickery that you can do with your gear ratios to make that not be the case. And we're going to, right now, take advantage of that. So I'm going to crank down fourth gear to 85. You saw how much top speed that gained me at the top there. But it's entirely impossible to keep that up. But that's where the rear end gear comes in. And we're going to crank this up. 395. Now, you may not notice a huge difference in uh, the top speed and acceleration from when I started, but trust me, once we get up through fourth gear and get up to speed, huh, it'll be a huge difference than what it would have been. So let's go ahead and also another thing that, that can be beneficial is to turn on manual transmission. Uh, shifting up through the gears yourself allows you to let the RPM build up higher than it does when you leave it on automatic. However, this can be damaging to your engine. In career mode, even though the damage might be limited, you can definitely blow an engine. So what I like to do um, myself is just to leave it on automatic. So we might not build up speed as quickly between gears. However, we're going to be easier on our engines that way. Yes. Um, also, let's look at the assist really quickly. All right, so I'm turning stability control off. Um, for the plate races, that's entirely okay to do because more often than not, unless you're gonna try to like get down on the apron or something, you're not gonna get too sideways at a restrictor plate track. Um, auto brake, I guess I'll leave on for now unless it proves to be a problem. Sometimes at certain tracks, it'll be triggering when you don't want it to. But here I think it'll be fine because you don't really break anyway, and it might help me break more as I hit pit road, so that would be probably helpful. Um, for those who feel like I probably should do things differently, let's see, rumbles off, that's good. Uh, as far as this kind of stuff goes, let's see, I want, yeah, that's all fine. Um, 
for those who feel like I should be doing things differently, more challenging, whatever, I'm sorry. This is just how I like to do things, especially when I'm starting out in these games, is to have fun with it. If I make it too brutally difficult, I just don't have fun with it, and that makes for the series to not be as good. It makes it also shorter sometimes. <laughs> anyway, enough rambling on. Let's get out. I'm going to go out and practice real quick, run a couple laps to make sure that I have the gear ratio where I want it, and then I will see you guys in qualifying. Alright guys, so I tweaked the gear ratio a little bit more, a couple notches down on fourth, a couple notches up on the rear end gear. I feel like it's pretty good, but we probably won't expect to qualify too well. However, once we get in the draft, and if we can get up to speed quick enough, hopefully, we should be okay. So let's go ahead and qualify for the Daytona 500. Now this first lap is going to be a throwaway, because you see the speed at which we start. It's not super great. Um, so much like in uh, the real NASCAR, your first lap, especially at restricted plate tracks, is going to be throwaway. So you might even find that you want to try to run a little higher line here just to make the lap last a little longer and give yourself time to build up to your best top speed. Now for us, that's not going to be super high, as I said. and We might not qualify great but hopefully we'll be able to get the job done uh, in the Gatorade duels so that we don't have to start too far back. Um, especially on restarts, when you start off so slow, it's great if you have people behind you, that way you're not losing the draft. All right, we're gonna be pretty well up to speed here, so I'm gonna start running around the bottom. We already qualified 15th. This is great news. This means that my gear ratio set up is paying off basically so we know that we're not going to start in the back we know that we're not the slowest car in the field so that's great one thing that i noticed actually when i was testing this with the xbox version is the gear ratio trick didn't work quite as well in that that i noticed and also of course this gear ratio trick isn't going to work at every track more often than not uh, you really can only see a huge benefit from it at the plate races, but let me tell you something. The Daytona 500, if you can win that in your opening race, which I mean is a bit of a stretch, but if you could, you make $1.4 million, which is huge toward improving your team. We just qualified freaking third, though. Now, if we'd gotten front row, we would have stayed there, which would have been great, but unfortunately we didn't. Uh, so that means we do have to race well in the in the 125s. But what a what a start for us right there. That is that is going to be huge. Um, but yeah, so if we could win the Daytona 500 right off the bat, get 1.4 million dollars, then we can start putting it towards bettering our team in big ways, making extra engines too, which would be nice, uh, stuff like that. Um, and trust me, we are going to struggle at the other races. There's no two ways about that. We will struggle. Daytona is the great equalizer, and it has the gear ratio trait. <laughs> but let's go ahead and run the Gatorade 125. All right. All right. So we are going to be in the, the first race, and we will end up on the inside road wherever we finish. Yeah, that's us, the Delphi car. Alright, so remember, we're going to be slow here at the start. Because of the higher end uh, gear, especially in fourth gear, we're going to have a hard time getting up to speed. So it is important to make sure that we have people behind us uh, providing a draft, because these guys are probably going to get away from us. And to be perfectly honest, we might not catch them. I mean, that's just all there is to it. We might not catch them. Um, so we may not be able to start in the top five like we qualified. But what I'm hoping is that once we get up to speed here, that we can, uh, we can be competitive. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, another thing, for those who aren't familiar with NASCAR Thunder 2003, restrictor plate racing is not like you expect from other series, or other games in the series, sorry. And that's that... Cars get strung out, and it is highly possible that they might get so far out in front that you're not going to catch them, or vice versa. You could be so far out in front that they don't catch you. 
but at the end of the day, it's a different experience altogether. It's, uh, it's more of an old school Daytona feel. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be tough when you're behind. Because those guys up front, there's probably not much chance that I'm going to catch them. Now, running in tandem with somebody isn't really something that's beneficial either, to be perfectly honest, unless you're trying to save fuel. Uh, saving fuel by drafting is a thing that happens. Um, and you can kind of both benefit from running in a line, because those guys up front are doing that. But the reality of the situation is we're not going to catch those guys. And you know what? That's okay. Um, at the end of the day, if we finish third, for example, we're going to qualify fifth for the Daytona 500. That's our, that'll be our official starting spot. And that's not bad at all. Uh, obviously, something similar will likely happen at the start of the 500, where I'm going to be a little slow off the go. But what you have to remember with the 500 is there will be a pit stop. And I'm not afraid to take some chances when it comes to pit stops. Now, has that burnt me in the past in other games? Yeah. But in this game, you kind of have to take some chances once in a while. Now, that, again, that's easier to pull off somewhere like here, where tire wear isn't going to be as damaging. However, other tracks, <laughs> tire wear can be terrifying. Um, and that's why we're probably going to expect to not win races for a while. If we could win the Daytona 500 and get that big payday, that would be awesome. But in reality, going forward, Atlanta, Bristol, places like that, we're going to struggle for a while. Even on this lower difficulty, trust me, it will happen. And that's all part of the building process. You have to build your team up to be something special. But... Um, yeah, so far I'm pretty happy with all of this. Obviously, I would love to be able to get up to speed faster and stay with the leaders, but it's okay. Um, I'm, I'm all right with the situation that we're in because we're going to finish third in this. We're going to qualify fifth, and we're not going to be in the back in fear of losing the draft or anything. We can hang with these guys and prepare for whatever pit strategy that we're going to try to pull off. Um, as you can see, tire wear isn't too bad. Fuel, you're already kind of getting an idea of how far you can go on your fuel. That can change when you start doing R&D. You can actually lengthen uh, how much of a fuel run you can do. But uh, for now, we, we've done a good thing here. We've got this car set up the way we want to. Looks like somebody blew up. What is this down on the inside? That was Todd Bodine, he blew up. Uh, Jeff Gordon trying to make a run on us here. But uh, we haven't quite hit halfway on fuel as we complete five laps. So that's very good to remember going into the 500. We need that information. All right, so we finished third, we will start fifth. I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously would have been happier if we could have qualified second or first because then we would have been locked on the front row regardless. Another thing I really like about um, this game is the replays. You get five different highlight spots. You can do slow motion. Uh, you can keep switching it to try to get a different camera angle for the same uh, shot. Different things like that. It's pretty fun to mess with, especially if you have like a, a close call or something. Um, let's get over here and then slow down. It's pretty neat. It's fun to play with. And, uh, okay, so we didn't get anything for that, obviously. It was just the Gatorade duel. But you know what? We started in second position. We finished third. I can be happy with that. Uh, Sterling Marlin, he got, so he, he's on the pole for the 500 anyway. Uh, but he won this and basically dominated it. Uh, yeah, and so you can see there's some different guys in the mix. You know, it's an older game, so you're going to see Bill Elliott and Michael Waltrip in the 15. You're going to see Ward Burton, Shane the Hall, who I believe is also a Rookie of the Year contender. There's Ricky Craven in the 32. So a lot of, a lot of cool things um, with this game to see these, these uh, old rosters, basically. Anyway, let's move on to the Daytona 500. 
Uh, do I want to tweak the car anymore? I don't think so. I felt pretty good about it, and honestly, it's about as good as we're going to get. We're going to have to have some strategy, some luck, and hope that things go our way uh, if we're going to hope to win. Otherwise, we can look at probably having a solid finish regardless. But remember, our pit crew is going to be pretty terrible too. So it's possible I could go in for two tires, and they could drop the tire and... and crap like that and I could end up still on the back. This could all go wrong, but it could all go right too. So without further ado, let's do this. Well here we are at the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. I'll actually let this play out a little bit. It's kind of cool because this is Joe Moore and I'm with Barney Hall. They the pan over and the flag coverage on MRN. Show the everybody starting. Here at this track, the team seem to be all pushing themselves just a little harder this week. There's no doubt about it. A lot of these NASCAR and Winston Cup drivers will tell you that it's really no different winning here than anywhere else. But those are the guys who haven't done it yet. Once their name is in the history books here, I guarantee you they'll change their mind. Rusty Wallace was the 1989 Winston Cup champion in one of the closest point races in NASCAR history. Well, that was a pretty exciting weekend in Atlanta. They may also, later on in the year, talk about us, like if we did well somewhere, if we've won, we've won polls or something like that. 2000 was a memorable year for Johnny Benson. But uh, they're not going to talk about us this time around, but they can in the future, and that's pretty cool. They actually run through a full lineup thing, too, for each deal. But uh, that takes some time. So we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into the race here. And we just have to hope to goodness that we can get up to speed. Um, again, it's not easy to get up to speed with this gear ratio situation. And I probably should have let that line continue to go so that there was more people for me to pull off of later. Uh, but it is kind of nice if you can stagger them out a little bit like that. Because now we have a chance of catching and passing Newman, catching and passing Gordon, and still being close enough to the front pack to latch onto them. We'll see. But it is nice if you can kind of stagger them a little bit like that. Probably should have kept somebody more directly behind me here. Because I don't want Newman to get away from me. I have to hope that we can get close enough to still be sniffing a draft. Okay, Michael Walter might help us out here a little bit being behind us yeah actually that did help us get up to speed and stay with Newman if I need to draft up here to Newman I might just slingshot past him and keep up momentum and try to keep Mikey behind me okay I don't know if I'm going to be close enough to stay with uh, those guys up there or to catch those guys up there we'll see I can get enough momentum built up from Mikey behind me. Let's see. Maybe. And they're running side by side, which helps. But that front group is definitely getting away, which is not so great. Okay, I've kind of lost Michael a little bit there. But uh, we've latched on to Jeff Go or, uh, Jimmy Johnson now. Try to draft past him. Catch on to Jeff. Oh, Mikey's staying with us now. That's good. Helpful to have somebody behind like that. And now I know the gap's too big up there, so I'm actually going to try to stay behind Jeff and see if we can both maybe catch up a little bit. I don't even know if that's going to be possible. But... We'll try it for a bit and see how it goes. It's possible that those guys up there can get, you know, a little loose or something and, and slow down a line a bit so that we can catch up. But, I don't know. I've typically found that running tandem doesn't help much in this game. But maybe in this case it is helping us some because we are running much higher top speed than we have been. Actually, it is helping. Well, I guess I was wrong. It had been a long time since I played this, and then just in my test I found that I was having more luck like going for slingshots than staying behind people, but we actually did catch up here. Now, remembering what happened before, we went five laps and we hadn't quite reached halfway on our fuel, right? 
So what that means is with a 20 lap race, we're gonna go, we're gonna complete 10 laps and we know we're still going to have a little bit of fuel left. Uh, not much, but a little bit, but we will get to halfway and be able to uh, finish the race. So we'll pit on lap 10 and we should be okay on fuel. Just barely. <laughs> But we were able to catch up with these guys, which is great. I guess we definitely learned something about uh, about the drafting in this game. All right, so I guess we'll work with Junior a bit here. He's got a bit of a run. They'll probably pit a lap earlier than me. I need to be careful of being right up behind somebody if they're gonna like start slowing down to hit pit road. Uh, but I'm definitely gonna be pushing it to to lap. 10 so that I know I can make it on fuel. But yeah, this is working out way better than I expected, actually. Um, you know, luckily, that uh, whole drafting thing's working. Now, here, I might have to think about ditching Junior to work with Mark because it does get harder when you're trying to push them past one of the other guys. Oh! Oh, Junior got squirrely there. We may have made a little contact. I don't know if he checked up or what. I need to get in front of him. There we go. That was a little bit scary. <laughs> Meanwhile, I guess it's Sterling Marlin, but he's gone. Uh, he has checked out. And like I said, that is likely to happen in this game. Uh, trick to plate racing is not what you'd expect it to be. All right. I guess I should also point out, you're probably wondering why I'm not wearing headphones. Um, I've just noticed that lately, okay, we went lap to lap six entirely on that, so we could actually probably wait till lap 11 if we wanted to to pit, just to be totally safe. Anyway, uh, I've just noticed lately that with recording, editing, uh, watching stuff, and then streaming, that I've been wearing my headphones like 14 hours a day or more. Uh, probably more, because I haven't been getting a ton of series lately. Um, but anyway, and because of that, it's been kind of like squeezing my head a bit more and like squeezing my glasses into the side of my head. So I've decided to try, and I tested it out. The microphone isn't picking it up. I'm just having the audio play quietly out of my speakers. Um, so that I can hear it, but it's not picking up, so that's good. At least I don't think it is. And um, even if it is, it should blend in with what you're hearing from the recording anyway. Um, we're actually catching Sterling. This is great. I'm so happy that this is actually working, this drafting business. But uh, anyway, uh, so that, that way I can once in a while, at least when I'm recording certain things like uh, console stuff, that I could maybe go without my headphones so that I'm not getting uh, my brain squeezed out. I can't believe this has worked. I don't know why, but I was convinced that you couldn't draft people in this. Maybe I'm thinking of one of the other games, but all right, we're going to ditch Mark, unfortunately. It might seem a little rude, but Sterling definitely has been the fastest car, and hanging with him seems like a wise decision. But you know what? We could uh, we could see ourselves taking the lead here in a second. Now I will say this: there are ways that you can gain some time on people, and that's by roughing them up a little bit. <laughs> I didn't really do a very good job of it, but sometimes you can get them to fishtail a little bit if you just rub up against them, and if you do that, they will slow down everybody behind them. Um, it's a little dirty, a little underhanded, but it's pretty helpful sometimes, and I'm not against using it. I just led a lap in the Daytona 500. This is crazy, guys. Um, so I'm definitely going to wait and pit on lap 11, um, just to make sure we're good on fuel. Um, this is crazy right now. I'm, I'm so stoked. If we win this race, like, should I... Mm, this makes me wonder now. Should I try for pit strategy? Yeah, I'm going to have to because my pit crew is going to be really bad. 
compared to these other guys. Okay, now he's going to be pitting, but Mark is not. So we'll, uh, we'll pick Mark up here. Yeah, I'm not as good out here by myself, that's for sure. Something to keep in mind, too. Closing laps, it might be better to be running second. <laughs> um, but anyway, I wonder... I guess I kind of have to try for two tires, don't I? If I want to make sure that I can win this thing. So let's um, let's do this. Something else that I, I love about certain games in the series is that you can pause and do your pit options separately. So we're going to say no to the left tires. They're not actually worn anyway. Um, no to repair damage. Full tank. All this is going to stay the same. All right. Uh, another thing that's cool is race stats, which um, I don't think any of the other games have, or at least most of them don't have. But you can stop and see the full running order at any time. Who's led the most laps? Who's, you know, how far somebody is behind? What the best lap was? Me and Mark had identical best laps because we were tandeming, so that's kind of cool. Um, stuff like that. And... Uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty neat. It's it's nice to have that amount of detail. But uh, anyway, all right, we have to get ready for our pit stop here. So let's get serious. Uh, Mark's gonna be coming in too, so I actually have to be careful about entering pit road. Um, this is gonna be like right on my bumper. He's actually going to blow past me here, but it's okay. Now, speed is 70, I think. Tony Stewart just got me a pit road speeding penalty, so I can't take right tires either. Because I got a five second penalty added. We just lost the Daytona 500 because my favorite driver just rammed into us. And pushed me up over the speed limit. I'm so depressed right now. We, we lost the Daytona 500. It's over, for sure. Because um, now it's going to be five more seconds. And I'm going to have old tires. And there goes Mark. And yeah, it's over. Well, there goes our big payday. There goes uh, all those upgrades. It's over. We're not even, yeah, we're not even going to get a top 10. Just rammed us too, but maybe that helped us get up to speed faster. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. I don't know, guys. It's it's frustrating, you know. We we did everything right, and then we got rammed, and because he rammed us, we went over the speed limit. So maybe I should have pitted the lap before but Sterling had pitted then too so we ran the risk of still being with people who could have bumped us um, but it's depressing it's very depressing um, anyway so we're not gonna get up to a very good top speed on these old tires um, they won't blow or anything and we shouldn't like spin out but um, you know unfortunately they are going to cause us to not run very well uh, now look there's there's Tony thanks for what you did to me there buddy that's what I was talking about making him fishtail much as I like Tony Stewart he kind of had that coming I think I should let Harvick go so that I can draft with him to be honest Hopefully I can catch on here quick enough. Stay with him. Come on, get a little closer, get a little closer. Come on, get up to him. Please, car, please. Oh, there's a couple people that hadn't pitted, so we're still going to get a top 10, I guess. Uh, so depressing, though. We had the perfect run going for what we needed. We just needed to hit pit road, take two tires, and we won the Daytona 500, but I guess that would have been too easy. It's my luck, though, right? You guys have watched me through the years on these other games. 
It takes time to, to get that lucky break, right? Or not time. But basically, I don't get lucky breaks usually. It takes time to build up to basically being dominant through hard work, and that's what's going to be. Even on rookie difficulty, look at this stuff, guys. It's, it's not easy. Alright, so... We might be able to draft up here, get Harvick. If we could get past both of these guys, we will get a top five finish, which would be fantastic, to be honest. Um, all things considered, still people coming off pit road up here. Oh, that was close. I was looking up up there, <laughs> trying to see if we were going to catch these guys, and then I made contact don't know how okay well that sucks Kimmel pulled up onto the track in front of in front of Harvick there and uh, Harvick brake checked me because of it ah, that killed our momentum and by the time those guys catch me there's not gonna be enough laps to do anything like tandem wise and I'm never gonna catch lap car up there so thanks <laughs> thanks game oh well it's fine you know what maybe this is for the best we'd started off with 1.4 million dollars maybe we would have gotten too overpowered too quick right maybe it wouldn't have been a challenge um i should have one of them push me and then and the other one go by so that I can draft off of them probably, right? Probably be wise. Alright, Jeff, you're gonna be the guy I push then. You can DJ to help me get up to speed. I can latch on to you. Okay, that didn't actually work. Uh, come on. You can lap car Kimmel's still gonna play a part in this. losing spots oh Jeff just got wow Jeff got a squirrely DJ checked up moved up in front of me well there goes our top five jeez there's so much to ask for guys give me a break will you it's so hard to get up to speed oh well Every time I think I have it in, in place, the, the AI screws me over. My fellow drivers here. Yeah, we're falling back fast now because I can't get up to speed anymore. We're going to be lucky to hang on to a top 10 now because I can't get up to speed. It's just not happening anymore. Oh god, that could be a caution. No. No, it just killed any chance of me ever getting up to speed and catching these guys, but I guess it gave me some breathing room on a top 10, too, so whatever. <sighs> yeah, our tires are shot. We've got a bunch of damage. We are never going to get up to a decent top speed, so they're going to just keep occasionally well I don't even know they're so far back but somebody will probably catch me I'll fend them off and looks like we'll finish eighth a caution would just end the race because there's no green white checker so yeah it's like Harvick is the one that might catch me I'll just fend him off probably maybe I could try to work with him, but I'm never going to get up to speed to be able to hang on to his back bumper if he does go past me, so. Also, my car is getting a little out of sorts in general. Alright, here took the white flag while I'm on the back stretch, that tells you anything. About the kind of lead that they have. Ah, oh, it's really sad. It's really, really sad. We had a win taken away from us by Tony Stewart, our favorite driver. We had a top five taken away from us by Jeff getting sideways and DJ brake checking us. Or Actually, first it was Harvick brake checking me because Kimmel pulled in front of me in the lapped car. Then uh, 
the Gordon DJ situation, and basically, we've been relegated to eighth. Hopefully, that's all. These guys are catching us super fast now. Gonna be, um, it's going to be a trick to stay in front of them, actually. Hold on. Have to uh, I have to play a dangerous game of blocking here. Oh, touch that quarter panel to his nose as slow as momentum. We hold on to eight. Look at our car. Got brake check so many freaking times. Oh man. Didn't fly at all in this one. Yeah, and that can be physically exhausting to these drivers. See that. Not only do the cautions oh. give them a chance to catch up on the racetrack, it also gives both their minds and their bodies a little break. They have all got to be drained after that one. The Delphi car had a good run, finishing in the top ten. Of course, all these teams want to win every race, but a top ten finish is still a great accomplishment at the racetrack. This has been NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. Brought to you by EA Sports and MRN. Next up is North Carolina. I do like the inclusion of the MRN guys. It's a nice touch. It's cool getting to hear Barney Hall. Rest in peace, dude. Well, we'll watch this final. Coming to the finish line move here as I block Stewart aggressively. But after what he did to me on pit road, he kind of deserved it. And that's it. At least my name will be on the best time now instead of the other stuff. And we still walked away with nine... Wait, did that say 94,000 or 940,000? That's still a pretty darn good payday. Obviously, it would have been way better if we had won, but hey. All right, well... Let's see our overall stats. We started fifth, we finished eighth, we led two laps. It's our rookie season. We're in a piece of crap car. Whatever, you know, we could have won $1.4 million, but hey. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? It's it's something to build on and maybe maybe that would have been too much too soon. I don't know. Look how look at that difference in times. Early Marling did hold on to win, though. That's, I guess that's good. He kind of deserved it. But it is interesting to see how that tricked out. Anyway, whatever. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's put a cap on this first episode. Uh, these are probably going to be one uh, race episodes, simply because of the length. Uh, this one's longer than those will be, though, because of you know the Gatorade duel and me taking time to explain a bunch of things. Uh, so, obviously things will change as that goes along, but, uh, but yeah, so our next race is at Rockingham, uh, North Carolina Speedway, which is kind of cool. Um, we are, let's see, see, it'll show you who won. Uh, we are seventh in the points because of our bonus point for leading, so we actually are one spot higher than we finished, so that's cool. And uh, let's see, we see the weekly awards. We got rookie of the race, meaning we beat Jimmy and Ryan and Shane Hall and whoever else is a rookie. Um, and if we look at rookie of the year, we have a nice little lead over those guys to start things off. And you get a decent payday for being rookie of the year, I believe, as well at the end of the year. So that's cool. Oh, Jamie McMurray, Casey Kane, Scott Wimmer, Shane Hall, Shauna Robinson, Greg Biffle, Frank Kimmel. Wow. There are 10 rookies in this first batch. That's interesting. I had kind of forgotten about that. And another thing that's cool um, is that those of us who are rookies that have the yellow stripes on our bumper, next season those yellow stripes go away, which I think is a cool touch. Anyway, that's going to be it for the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to destroy that like button to show support for this new series. Share it with your friends. Subscribe if you're new to join the Wolf Pack. And I will see you guys next time for Rockingham Speedway. Bye. You can tell the story, but I can deal.